Welcome back, compadres. Today we're going to take a different route. We're going to discuss economics and the elements of net cash flow. As a technical guru, I don't really put a lot of weight on economics, but it's important to understand because it dictates what I do. You know, all these cool projects that get lined up for me to take on is a direct result of the economics of the cash flow and somebody's decision and management to say, hey, yeah, let's go pursue this because not only can we make uh, something cool, but we can get a return on our investment. And so, you know, as an engineer, we just have to look at this and think about this uh, because in reality, a lot of you guys may actually turn into managers and uh, you're going to be seeing these concepts down the road. Why not grasp them now? So today I'm going to talk about the engineering economics from a petroleum engineering perspective. So guys, let's get started. Today we're going to go through a brief overview of the five elements of net cash flow that you'll see in petroleum engineering and possibly other disciplines. So one element of net cash flow is going to be expenses. So this can be like overhead cost. Another element is investments such as drilling and completion cost. Another element is outside shares. So this can include royalties paid to owners and then revenue probably the most important to you how much you can get from your oil and gas streams and last federal income tax we're going to touch a little bit on these in the upcoming slides so all those elements go into the net cash flow equation the first element revenue is basically what you make off your sales of oil and gas streams it can also include byproducts such as helium i know in the labarge oil field in wyoming or gas field can't remember exactly but they were making profit from helium that they were producing with their oil and gas streams you can also make revenue flipping leases in the sale of assets and so that's a positive cash flow in your net cash flow equation the next element is investments this includes things such as your drilling and completion cost um, also it includes infrastructure to carry your oil and gas streams to a gas plant or uh, a facility to process your oil and gas stream so it's going to include things such as pipelines and separators and equipment of that nature and it's a deduction from your net cash flow the next element is expenses expenses is going to be things such as operating costs so there's a cost to operating a plant or facility also it can include things such as overhead and roustabout salaries engineering salaries it's also going to include things like workovers to maintain the well over the life over its production life and also to abandon a well that's going to cost you money too that's going to be an expense and so that is expenses is a negative cash flow the next element is federal income taxes and so the government's got to get a take on pretty much everything that you make and also the state so this includes things such as government and state tax rates and also includes other elements that can help reduce federal income tax like depreciation and tax deductions um, so in reality your federal income tax rate I've seen it float between like 34 and 40 percent but that's a big big uh, take away from your revenue stream is federal income tax so it's a deduction in your net cash flow equation the next element and this kind of goes into the federal income tax realm but I feel it's necessary to kind of separate it into its own uh, this is outside shares and outside shares is basically those things I'm defining as as those things that take away from your production so royalties the owners are going to get you know based on how the contracts written they may get an eighth of production so if you produce you know 100 barrels of oil well they're gonna get a, an eighth cut of that and also there these can include things like production taxes so severance taxes on the by the state and ad valerum tax uh, also what goes into the outside shares equation is net revenue interest so you can go into a oil field with BP and if they have 50 percent working interest in the field well you're only gonna get you know 50 percent cut uh, is gonna be your share but you know you have these other things that reduce that such as royalties and in that nature so outside shares is a negative cash flow and that wraps up your net cash flow equation and so we're gonna use 
elements of this in Excel to come up with an economic limit and so we won't you touch everything in this equation but we'll touch some elements and it's important to kind of realize where your net cash flow what what's it's being derived from and so we're gonna uh, end it there and go through and show you an example of how to uh, come up with an economic limit for your well so let's go ahead and get started we're gonna use the same decline curve data we've used previously of our gas well and with the ultimate goal of predicting or calculating an economic limit for this well so we've added a box here called economic parameters it considers things such as outside shares expenses net revenue interest and operating cost so these are your the inputs we're going to be looking at with the ultimate goal of predicting a net price or the cut of the gas price that you're taking home with you that your company is making revenue off of we've also put in investments here drilling and completion cost of one million dollars but it won't really be applied in this example because to predict an economic limit you're trying to go to the last point in time and because this drilling and completion cost is made at initial time we don't consider it when we determine our economic limit it'll go into our net present value calculations later uh, in upcoming YouTube videos but for now this will not be a factor and to simplify this example we're considering cost and operating cost if I consider cost and operating cost my problem is still linear if I add inflation into it my problem becomes nonlinear and that becomes a little more difficult to or a little more mathematically strenuous to get a result uh, this is just the fundamental example guys so that you can just apply these and get a feel for for what they do and how they affect the economic limit for this well so the first thing we're going to consider is working interest we're going to say we're going to operate we have a hundred percent working interest so we're not going to share this field with BP ConocoPhillips we're operating this field the royalty can be the let's just say the mineral owner is going to take one-eighth of the production of what we produce the state and government also want to take some home with them they're they're greedy I guess uh, so let's just say they're gonna take seven percent of our production and also the county let's say they're gonna take two percent with our ad valerum tax because they want to pay uh, pay for their uh, citizen schools and, and keep things nice in their city so the cost and operating cost I'm just gonna put in a hundred dollars uh, you know that's just the number I chose it's an assumption um, this obviously that would mean this well has very low maintenance and the gas price is three dollars and sixty five cents per thousand cubic feet I'll have to go look up that number but that's my guess right now and so the first thing you want to do is calculate your net revenue interest which is simply this equation right here it's your working interest multiplied one minus your royalty so 100% working interest times 1 minus 1 eighth so your net revenue interest is 7 eighths so you'll multiply this by the price to see what you take home uh, with you per thousand cubic feet of gas but oh the government wants it too so you have to consider that in your net price equation so we're gonna take our net revenue interest multiply it by our gas price and then the government and state are going to take a percentage of that so we're going to multiply the price by one minus our severance tax minus our ad valerum tax so of that three dollars and sixty five thousand three dollars and sixty five cents per thousand cubic feet of gas you produce you're only making two dollars and ninety one cents the next step you want to do is calculate economic limit so to calculate economic limit you simply just consider this equation and remember I'm considered constant operating costs across the producing life of the well so this equation would become more complicated if your operating cost was a nonlinear function but in this case it's we're assuming it's not so it's going to be your operating cost divided by your net price 
And so your economic limit is going to be 34.4 thousand cubic feet per day. So that's that's when you would say your net cash flow is, is zero when you as your production declines to 34.4 thousand cubic feet per day well that's when you want to stop the well because you're losing money now because your operating costs exceed your price you're making and you're done so this is a very simplified example uh, we considered things such as outside shares and expenses and taxes associated with that uh, obviously you have software that'll do this for you but this is a great starting point to jump into the economic yardsticks which we're going to cover later on we're going to look at net present value uh, profit to investment ratio payout uh, IRR those sort of things and this is a starting point right here so we have an economic limit now and we're going to set our economic limit right here we put in a a placeholder now we have a calculation to get economic limits so you can go mess with these say we own only 80 percent of the field well now our economic limit increases uh, the economic rate increases because we don't have own all the production and so you can mess with these numbers and toy with this see you know play what if uh, that's pretty cool but that's all I'm going to do today, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. Adios.